my god, what am I doing? Hello, welcome to Just Thinking Out Loud. My name is Desiree. This video is about artists and the fact that it seems as if so many artists in the world are on the left or left leaning. And I'm here to say that not all artists are. And I think somebody needs to say that because it simply doesn't appear that way when you look at so many institutions that have claimed themselves to be the arbiters of what is good art or what is important art to make. And so much art nowadays is about justice, like social justice or making a point, which I don't think is bad but I do think it's bad when it's almost as if you shut out every other kind of art. So that's one theme that I think is common. And another theme is for art to be non-concrete or very subjective in its beauty. And I'm going to point out that I understand that kind of art, but I also understand much more technical art and the beauty in that as well. I think I'm going to use this video as an opportunity to show you guys some of my art. Most of the art I'm going to show are going to be older pieces of art, which you'll understand in a minute when I make this video as I'm talking. So I want to start out with a story. The high school that I went to in Jamaica was called Campion, is called Campion College. I think it's the best high school in the world and I am very biased. And one of the things that I think was very significant about it is that it was trying to create a well-rounded individual. And it focused on learning, mental learning, but also characteristics. And it also focused on spirituality, which would be contentious for some people, but it was a religious school, a Jesuit school to be exact. The focus was on science, but also on art. So you did, you know, math, science, biology, chemistry, technical drawing, but you also did art, music. I think just art and music were the more creative sides of it. There was also personal development. All these are mandatory courses, classes. In order to graduate, you couldn't just do well in your academic studies, but you also had to have participated in a charity and you also have to have participated in a sport. And I think you also had to have participated in just a club. So I think, I'm not sure if the clubs, you know, that's not important, but you had to participate in a charity and in a club. So it wasn't just about developing one side of your brain. The reason that I'm bringing this up is I think that a lack of development of both sides of the brain is why we're seeing a lot of polarization in society. It's almost as if people cannot understand why somebody else isn't seeing it the way that they see it. What I mean by that is, it's just the, oh, you're just evil, or, oh, you're just stupid. Either one of those things, which both sides partake in with pleasure whenever they're trying to argue against the other side. It's very apparent to me that lots of people haven't been schooled in logic, like verbal logic, but then also in uh, basic like mathematics or understanding of data. I particularly think about uh, the Black Lives Matter movement and I still cannot understand how everybody was won over. Actually, I can. They were won over by the suffering because you can see, particularly when they bring up specific stories of people who were shot down, you feel the emotions of it. And that's very real and it's very true. And I never want to deny that. But it's more than just looking at specific instances. You also have to look at the wider picture and you have to understand when someone is explaining to you what a so-called prevalence of this, these kinds of incidents, how that would look if you saw the data. And I just think that a lot of people don't have that education. And I think that's a problem. I don't know how to solve it. I don't think you have to be super smart to understand certain things. <sighs> Another incident that I think highlights what I'm trying to say is the locking up children in cages issue where you're focusing on the particular images of suffering, but you're not able to analyze why it's harder to find a different solution so that that suffering doesn't occur. 
and that it might not be possible to find the solution that you think would be best so that there would be no suffering. Or just looking at particular instances of pain that reach out to you, resonate with your heart, but then you don't realize that you're just being directed to feel this particular kind of pain or to be aware of it, but you're not looking at other kinds of pain that are simultaneously occurring because that's just what the media wants to focus on on this particular moment. But those are just those are just two examples, Black Lives Matter and the immigration issue with children, that I think really highlight a lot of feeling going on and awareness of feeling and tragedy, but not of analytical thinking. Artists, I think, are able to tap into the more feeling aspects of ourselves as human beings. And that's how creativity occurs because you need to have that fluidity that comes into play in order to make new things or to see different patterns. It can't be rigid. So I think it's expected that there will be more artists who are more left-leaning, as in more focused on um, what people would call progressiveness, alleviating the injustices of the world, injustice meaning unfairness, basically, of the world that we live in, and implementing solutions that we as a society can partake in in order to make that better for everyone. I think that's like the good heart of progressivism. You know, so I think it makes sense that there are more artists who are on the side. However, not all artists are. And I think we need to remember that. And I think that more artists need to step up. And this is not just visual art, but also entertainers, comedians, people who write games, for example. Those kinds of more obviously creative endeavors. People just need to know that they exist, like me. I will even let you guys in on a secret to make you understand what I'm trying to say. I haven't painted in a long time because I've been too sad to paint. Why I'm sad is my business, but I am that emotional of a person. So I 100% understand why people react to certain kinds of suffering that they see in the world. And they're like, oh God, we have to fix this. This is not right. I cannot stand to live in a world where this kind of thing would go on and I would not do something about it. But it's not that simple. It, it's not that simple. And I think if more people were fully mentally developed, as in, wow, that sounds insulting. I think if more people had education that developed both sides of their brains, then we wouldn't see less conflict, actually, but less polarization. I do think you're always going to have people that line up along that spectrum of more, quote-unquote, cold-hearted and, quote-unquote, snowflakey. Like, I always think that will happen, and I think that's good for society, and you, could, you shouldn't expect anything less. Like, there's always a, a spectrum. But I think that there will be less, oh my god, you're evil, or oh my god, you're stupid whichever one. So this video might have been more philosophizing than you were expecting or even I intended, but I'm tired of this constant display of only lefty people are entertainers. And that's how it really seems because those are the only people who seem to speak up. And I think that that should change because there are lots of feeling like people out there who aren't on the left or lefty like. That's all I have to say for today. Don't forget, you can support the channel if you like my content at justthinkingoutloud.tv slash donate. And also don't forget I have other channels that you can watch and subscribe to. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye.